Hi there, I'm Ann Taylor Pittman, Executive Editor at Cooking Light. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to be making one of, honestly, my favorite recipes I've ever developed. So I created this recipe. I hope you like it. It is banana walnut bread. Um, everyone has a favorite banana bread recipe. I'm hoping to convince you that you need to give this one a try. So it starts with a little bit of quick cooking oats. So the oats um, add whole grain goodness to the banana bread. Um, it's used in the batter as well as in the streusel topping. But to use it for the batter, what I'm going to do first is soak it in buttermilk. And that's to just sort of plump it and hydrate it and make it a little more tender. I'm using quick oats, which have been sort of processed a little bit so that they break down and get more tender quickly. If you're using regular old-fashioned oats, which are fine to use, you might just want to soak them a little bit longer. Um, we're going to go 10 minutes. We're actually going to cheat that um, for this video or for this um, demo. So here I have half a cup of oats. I'm adding three quarters of a cup of whole buttermilk. So whole milk buttermilk is rich and creamy. Now I know in some parts of the country, buttermilk is not a common thing. We are in the South. Um, buttermilk is easy to find for us. If you cannot find buttermilk, I know that there are recipes out there for how to make it using milk and lemon juice. That's fine to do. I think a better method is maybe to start with Greek yogurt, plain Greek yogurt. But Because here's the thing, when you do the milk and lemon juice and let it kind of curdle, I hope you guys know what I'm talking about, the mixture is still really thin. It doesn't quite have the thickness, the body that you're looking for. So uh, a lot of people keep Greek yogurt on hand. So if you need three quarters of a cup of buttermilk, I would suggest trying um, a half a cup of Greek yogurt plus one fourth cup water or milk and just stir that up and it will give you a texture very similar to buttermilk. So in the real recipe, we would let this stand for 10 minutes. We'll see how long we go. And we have a reader question. Oh, great. Sarah wants to know if you can use rolled oats or do they have to be quick cooking? You can use rolled oats. They're going to maybe take a little bit longer to get um, soft. So this recipe calls for soaking for 10 minutes. Use what you have on hand. The only oats I would not use is steel cut. Those are going to be really tough. But regular rolled oats, maybe soak for 15 or 20 minutes just while your oven's preheating. Great question there. Okay, so I also have six ounces of white whole wheat flour. So I love making, baking with whole grain flour. So we have whole grain in the form of the oatmeal. We have whole grain in the form of... Uh, white whole wheat flour. Six ounces is about one and a half cups. And then to that, I'm going to add some of my leavening ingredients. I have one and a half teaspoons, or sorry, let me check the recipe, one teaspoon of baking powder, a quarter teaspoon of baking soda. So whenever you have an acidic ingredient like buttermilk, you need a little bit of baking soda to give it the rise that you're looking for. Um, and then a half teaspoon of kosher salt. So those are my dry ingredients. Just kind of mix those up real quickly and set those aside over here. And then let me come to the ingredients for my streusel topping. Okay, so streusel topping to me is one of the best things about a banana bread or a quick bread or a muffin. It's crunchy, it delivers um, a little bit of sweetness and a little bit of saltiness right immediately um, to your palate when you take a bite of the bread. So the ingredients for that are, let's see, I have three tablespoons of oats. So you have used a half a cup in the batter and then three tablespoons for the topping, three tablespoons of brown sugar, a quarter cup of walnuts. You can use any nut that you like. I'm using walnuts here because I'm using roasted walnut oil to kind of uh, give a double dose of walnut flavor. You can use pecans, you can use um, hazelnuts, any sort of nut you like, but I've got walnuts here. I've got an eighth a teaspoon of kosher salt, a tablespoon of whole wheat flour, and a teaspoon, sorry, half a teaspoon of cinnamon. These are the ingredients for my streusel. I'm just going to kind of mix these up, and then I'm going to add this wonderful ingredient, which is roasted walnut oil. So this can be a little tricky to find. We usually find it locally in Fresh Market or Whole Foods. You can also order it from Amazon, which we did <laughs> because we didn't have time to run out. Um, 
Roasted walnut oil is, like I said, going to give you a double dose of that nutty flavor. They also have roasted pecan oil, um, which would be great with pecans. Now, if you cannot access this, if you can't find it, I have a great hack that you can use. So the recipe calls for one-fourth, six, sorry, six tablespoons, which is one-fourth cup plus two tablespoons of the roasted walnut oil. If you cannot find a roasted nut oil, I bet you you can find toasted sesame oil. It's usually so sold with the Asian ingredients in the supermarket. Now, it is very, very strongly flavored, so I would not suggest using six tablespoons of strictly roasted sesame oil, but instead maybe use a tablespoon and then mix it with five tablespoons of a neutral oil like canola or grapeseed. Okay, so one tablespoon of sesame oil plus five tablespoons of a neutral oil will approximate the flavor of this roasted walnut oil. So I have my streusel ingredients just combining here. If you're just joining me, I'm making banana walnut bread. And I'm just getting my streusel ready to go. I'm adding two tablespoons of that walnut oil. That's not all of the walnut oil we're going to use. We're going to put some in the batter. It's going to infuse lots of good flavor into the bread. And we have a question. Great. Um, is it important to use roasted walnut oil versus other walnut oil? Is that going to make a big flavor difference? It makes a big flavor difference. It really does. You can find um, traditional walnut oil that's not roasted, and it, it might as well in this recipe be a canola oil or a grapeseed oil. You're not really going to taste it. That's a great question. So I would suggest you know, really trying to seek out um, a, a roasted nut oil including that sesame oil hack um, I suggested earlier. Unless you don't like nuts, <laughs> then you can leave it out. You can go with a neutral oil. I know a lot of people um, might want to use coconut oil. You could definitely try that. Just know it's really going to crank up the saturated fat in the, in the recipe. And this flavor is very pronounced. Okay, so I'm just going to set that aside. Everything's coming together here. So I have some bananas, I've already mashed some, and I've given this tip before, but it's worth sharing again. So if your bananas are not quite as ripe as you would like them, you know, a lot of times we want to plan ahead for banana bread, but sometimes the mood strikes and you're not quite ready and your bananas are a little firm, you can just place them in the oven while the oven preheats until the skin turns black. So this one, I didn't even separate them from the bunch, so that's why it got black on one side and it's, um, it's yellow on the other because it was attached to its brothers and sisters. Um, but that is going to soften the banana and it's going to kind of help it get a little bit sweeter and replicate the flavor of a really nice ripe banana. It might get a little soft, like it did here where the skin is black, totally fine. You're gonna be mashing it up anyway. Um, but that is what you're looking for, to kind of soften it and deepen the sweetness. Okay, so I just use a fork. You can uh, use a potato masher if you like. For me, a fork gives good results. I like to mash it pretty thoroughly so that I don't get big chunks. You know, when you cut into a banana bread and you see those uh, lighter colored chunks in there, that's probably from banana that was not mashed very thoroughly. So I'm just trying to get out any big chunks. There's nothing wrong with those big chunks. If that's your preference, go for it. Okay, bananas and walnuts go together beautifully. Their flavors are very compatible and very wonderful. Okay, so that's three bananas. It ends up being about one and a third cups of mashed bananas. Okay, I'm gonna bring over my wet ingredients to go into my batter. Okay, so let's pretend that these have soaked for about 10 minutes. Maybe they have, I've been talking a lot. Um, so this is our half cup of oats and three quarters cup of buttermilk. To that I'm gonna add three quarters a cup of brown sugar. I'm using light brown sugar. You can use dark brown sugar if that's what you have on hand. I'm gonna go ahead and add the eggs in here, two eggs, and just kinda give them a little stir to break up the yolks. I have a teaspoon and a half of vanilla extract. And then a quarter cup of that roasted walnut oil. So that's going to permeate the entirety of the bread with that lovely walnut flavor. Okay, and just kind of mix this up. Let me add my banana, my mashed banana goes in. So all the wet ingredients are coming together. 
And we have another question. Great. Um, does it matter what type or what kind of bananas you use? Oh, that's an interesting question. You know, we usually see, what is the main variety? Is it Cavendish? Cavendish. Cavendish is what we usually see in the um, grocery stores. I mean, you could definitely try like the little red bananas. Those are, have usually like a stronger flavor. It might make for a more intense banana, um, banana bread experience. Now, if you see plantains in the grocery store, those are the big sort of thick, hard bananas. A lot of times they're sold green for um, frying and making tostones. Uh, I would not use those because they're not as sweet as true bananas. Um, they're used a lot of times in savory applications and a lot of uh, Caribbean and Latin cooking. So, you know, I'm just using regular grocery store Cavendish. Um, but yeah, you can try some of the other kind of mini bananas or the red bananas. Those might give a more intense flavor. Okay, so now I'm going to add my dry ingredients. That's the flour plus my leavening and salt. Just give that a stir. You know, one thing I love about quick breads is you can pull out the mixer if you want, but you don't have to. You can just mix everything up in a bowl. Do y'all remember when we didn't have these? <laughs> I mean, it's not, it hasn't been that long since these um, silicone and rubber spatulas have been out in the market. I remember, I don't know, maybe it was like 15 years ago that they became popular. Oh my gosh, they're awesome. Um, and we have another question. Uh, Great. Jamie wants to know, could you add tahini to this drizzle topping? Oh, Jamie. Um, I think I know, might know which Jamie that is. Um, yes, tahini would be delicious on this. Um, a tahini drizzle or even a little tahini in the batter would be wonderful. Now remember that straight up tahini is a little bit bitter, so if you're using it as a drizzle, maybe use it um, sparingly or maybe combine it with maybe a touch of honey to kind of soften that bitterness. Okay, so everything is combined here. This needs to go into a nine by five inch pan. If your pan says it's eight and a half by four and a half, that works also. I think that's what this one is. Um, I've lined it with parchment paper just to make it easier to get the bread out. I just like using the parchment paper. That way I don't have to use cooking spray. Nothing wrong with cooking spray. I think the recipe calls for cooking spray. Um, so the batter goes in. I have my oven heated to 350 degrees. Okay, put the batter in there. And then, before this goes into the oven, I just want to sprinkle on that streusel topping. Like I said, it's uh, a little bit salty, it's got sweetness, it's once uh, the walnuts get a little toasted in the oven, it'll be nice and crunchy. And it really makes this bread something special. Um, one more question, Anne. Yep. Uh, Antara wants to know, would these work in a muffin tin? Ooh, that's a great question. Yes, these would absolutely work in a muffin tin. Um, I would say they'd probably make about 12 muffins. Um, I'm not sure you would get more than that from this, from this recipe, but absolutely it would work in a muffin tin. I'd say keep the oven at 350 degrees, distribute your streusel topping evenly across all the muffins, and try going cooking for, start with like 18 minutes. For some reason, that's a magic number a lot of times with muffins. Try 18 minutes. Maybe check a few minutes before if your oven runs hot. You want to stick the wooden pick into the center of the muffin. If it comes out clean, you're good. If it comes out with just a few crumbs clinging on, that's fine too. You can go ahead and pull them. It's a great, great idea. Okay, so I'm just popping this in. And that's going to cook for anywhere from 55 minutes to one hour. So whenever you're baking, I always say to err on the side of caution and start checking for doneness on the early end. Again, take a wooden pick, stick it into the middle of the bread. If it comes out clean or with just a few crumbs clinging to it, then the bread is done. Okay, and this is what you get when that bread is done. It's a wonderful loaf with this crunchy, yummy streusel topping. You just cut into it. Oh my gosh, look at that. Yum, it is super moist. This one's still maybe a little bit warm, which is great. I baked it off earlier this morning. Super moist interior. You know, if you serve this to people who aren't used to whole grain baking, 
they won't even know that this is made with whole grain flour. Um, it's moist, it's everything you expect a banana, to, banana bread to be, and then maybe a little bit more, because the flavor is so good. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, please come back next week. I'll be cooking up some fish. Uh, please let me know in the comments what types of recipes you like, what you'd like to see more of. If you're watching this on Facebook, please share the page and like the page. And if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe so that you'll get notifications when we go live. Thanks so much. See you next week.